because there's a lot to learning to play the guitar and there's a lot of fun a lot of work too but we're going to make it all fun that that's the purpose of the chord buddy and music is to have fun and let's face it everyone picks up the guitar for one reason and that's to make music and chord buddy will allow you to do that today you will actually be playing music in just a few minutes from now so also i want to talk about the metronome and we'll get to that in just a minute but you know, the next generation of great guitar players, B.B. King and all those guys, uh, Eddie Van Halen, uh, they all started somewhere. And Chord Buddy is going to be the new thing that everyone learns the guitar with. And you know what? You might very well be the next great guitar player. And at least I hope so. All right, so we want to talk about the importance of rhythm and timing. Uh, one thing that most music teachers overlook in the beginning is rhythm and timing. And without proper rhythm of your right hand, if you're right-handed, that is, uh, it doesn't matter how well you make a chord. If you can't play in beat and time with the music, you're useless to the band. You're useless to yourself because everything is out of time. And that is why we use what's called a metronome. Uh, this is actually a boss metronome. I'm not advocating to go out and buy a boss. We do sell metronomes uh, at chordbuddy.com. But uh, I just want to demonstrate real quick uh, what a metronome sounds like and how you use it. This is set up, when I mash it, you'll, you'll hear it. A measure has four beats in it. One, two, three, four. That's quarter notes. If you're playing eight notes, eighth notes, it will be one and, two and, three and, four and. And that's eight beats if you're playing eighth notes. But this is set up for quarter notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that's how we'll be playing our first songs is I'll play with the metronome and you will strum to each click. And if you notice, the first beat of the metronome was accented. And that's on purpose because that lets you know where the one beat is. And you always, in most songs, you will come in on the one. Okay? So that's the importance of the metronome. Tuning is another very, very important issue. And I cannot stress tuning enough. Um, here is an electronic tuner that's clipped onto the guitar. Electronic tuners have gotten so cheap, you can buy them anywhere from $5 up to $29 or $39. And we sell several of them at ChordBuddy.com. But it's important to play in tune. I have taught so many kids and adults whose uh, un Uncle Jim Bob or whoever tuned it at the last family reunion, and that kid started training his ear that out of tune was in tune. And he played so long with it out of tune that it was, we had to retrain his ear. So that's very important. Every time you pick up your guitar to practice, make sure it is in tune. Let's go to practice now. Practicing is something without practice, chord buddy will do you no good. Nothing will do you any good if you don't practice. Uh, whether you're a professional athlete or, or you are shooting pool or shooting basketball or doing mathematics or spelling, you have to practice. And I recommend at least 30 minutes a day of practice time. I've been playing guitar, dobro, fiddle, and banjo for 40 years. I still practice an hour to two hours a day. After 40 years, I still get up in the morning and practice. I have my, my time away from my family and, and children where they know that is my practice time. And I suggest that you do the exact same thing. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the course material now. Uh, Steve Eccles actually helped me write this material, and he is a national certified music educator. So whether you're learning this in school or you're learning it at home, uh, this material will take you about two months. And when I say about two months, if you play an hour a day with this material, it will take you roughly 60 days to get through everything. Now, you may be a speedy Gonzales and be able to finish it in 30 days, or 
you may be you go at a slower pace and can only put 30 minutes in it a day and in that case it may take you three or four months the point being I don't care if it takes you six months take it slow understand everything that we're saying and everything we're doing because you don't want to have to go back and say man I didn't get that and be lost later when we start actually learning how to make the cords yourself and we start removing the tabs off the cord buddy so don't be in a hurry take everything slow get your rhythm and timing down learn the independence with each button of the cord buddy and I'll go over that with you in just a minute so I've covered some basics here and uh, the main thing y'all have fun and uh, we're fixing to go and I'm going to show you uh, how the cord buddy works. Well we've got the cord buddy out of the package now and you can take yours out if you want to. Go ahead and take it out. I just want to go over the parts of it with you and uh, get some lingo so to speak down. As you'll notice there's a blue tab right here. The blue tab plays the chord G. The red tab plays the chord D. And you, about, let me back up. You will use your pinky, your pinky to play the blue tab. You will use your ring finger to play the red tab. You will use your middle finger or second finger, whatever you prefer to call it, to play the green tab, and that is the C tab. All right? You will use your first finger or your index finger to play the yellow tab, and that is the E minor or the six minor. And we, we will refer to it both ways, E minor and the six minor. When we get into our music theory part uh, on the DVD, we'll explain more about what six minor, four, five, one, and all that means in music. But uh, so anyway, pinky plays the blue one, that's a G. Ring finger plays the red one, and that is a D chord. Middle finger plays the green one, that's a C chord. Index finger plays the yellow one, that is an E minor chord. All right, right here, thumb screw, this is what tightens this collar to the side of the neck of the guitar that holds it in place, keeps it from moving around, sliding around. All right, I'm going to actually turn it over now and show you the bottom side of the chord, buddy and show you the little booties or footies, whatever you want to call them, uh, that goes on the fingers that come in contact with the string. All right, these little black booties right here, and they're two different sizes. From the factory, Chord Buddy comes set up for the standard guitar. Now, what in the world is standard? i am uh, been playing guitar for 40 years, and I've probably played two or 3,000 guitars, and not one of them plays the same although they say they're set up standard they all play different so um, from the factory chord buddy is set up to play on a standard guitar now yours may not play exactly right or it may it may play perfect out of the box that's why we have different size booties we have a one millimeter and we have a two millimeter this one right here doesn't even have a booty on it it didn't need it so you can adjust for three heights, none, one millimeter, and two millimeter. If you need to take one off or put it on, just how easy that is, just, just wiggle it and pull it off, and it comes off. Uh, and then if you need to put it back on, just press it back on. It's that simple. There's nothing to it. And you may need to adjust those you know, to the string height of your guitar. All right, so we're going to go now and we're going to actually put it on the guitar, show you how to put it on your guitar, and then we're going to get to playing your first song. Before we put the chord buddy on, I, one thing I did forget, on the underside here, there's a, a little rib that runs on both of these clamps. And uh, I'm going to try to tilt it just so maybe the camera will catch it a little bit better. Uh, this is what goes on the neck of the guitar. This rests on top of the neck of the guitar right underneath the strings on the very edge of the guitar. That's important. And the back end of this little rib backs up to the nut. And the nut is what the strings ride over. Okay. 
the strings right over the nut, and it's usually an ivory or it's either plastic, but it's it's usually white colored, an off white color, and uh, so it butts up to the back of that. Okay, so that's an important little thing there. Now we're going to actually put the the chord buddy on the guitar. What you want to do, you want to put it on this way and just rock it over, and then what it it will do, it will just slide right down on it. Make sure the ribs are on top of the fretboard and slide it back. I'm going to slide it forward a little bit. These rubber pads are sort of sticky. Now that's the perfect position right there. Okay, then hold it with your right hand and tighten the nut. All right, don't tighten it. Don't, don't break the neck of your guitar. Don't just get it snug and it will hold in place. See, it's good and sturdy right there. And then pull the guitar up, and my friend, you are ready to make some music. All you do is press down and strum. That's how easy you make a G chord. If you don't have a, an electronic tuner yet, and but I strongly, strongly suggest you go to your local music store and purchase one, or either you go to chordbuddy.com and buy one off our website. If you don't have one yet, I want to play each string and just use your ear and try to match your strings up with mine. Okay, the bottom string is an open E. The second string is a B. The third string is a G. The fourth string is a D. The fifth string is an A. And the top string the last string, the largest string, is in is another E. So your bottom and top strings are both E's. They should be in unison together. All right. So what I want to run through now is Earlier, when I was holding the chord, buddy, I was show, telling you what fingers you use, and I'm going to do that again right now while I'm strumming. The pinky plays the blue tab. I'm, I'm pulling my fingers down to get them out of the way. You will not play it this way. You will actually play it with your fingers up, but just for sake of showing it, I'm, I'm pulling my fingers down. Pinky plays the G tab, and you play all six strings. The ring finger plays the D, and you play the bottom four strings. The uh, middle finger plays the C chord, and you play the bottom five. And then the E minor is played with the index finger, and you play all six. Okay, now I want to go over the first pattern with you. I'm going to start the metronome. We talked about that earlier, too. One, two, three, four, one two, three, four. Play each chord four times, starting on the one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, one, one. Reverse it back to the middle, two, three, four. Ring, two, three, four. G, pinky, Three, four. Okay. So, I want you to stop the DVD right now, and I want you to just take some time and experiment with, with your timing playing one, two, three, four. Go through all your progressions. You don't have to go in order, by the way. You can change it around. You can go from G, one, two, to green, one, two, back to G. And then to D. Then back to G. To C, middle finger. Back to G. 
first finger E minor, then to your D, ring finger, and back to G. So the important thing here is just to experiment. Get used to your fingers playing and working independently of each other, and we'll see you in the next segment. Well, all right, that was fun, wasn't it? You kind of getting your fingers working on the different strings of the chord, buddy. One thing I forgot to mention, I want to show you how, actually how to hold the pick. Um, the way that I teach my students is actually just do your finger like you're just squeezing a trigger there on a toy gun. Lay your pick just like that, and then lay your thumb over it. And that's exactly how you hold a pick. Mo a lot of people hold them like that. That's a no-no. We do not hold the pick like that. So squeeze your finger just like you're squeezing the trigger. Lay your thumb on it. And then that's exactly how I want you to strum. Okay? It will feel just a, a grunt odd to start with, but you'll get used to it. And once you learn it, then you can sort of loosen it up a little bit. Instead of going like that, you can actually loosen it up to there. Okay? Uh, well, we're going to go to Tom Dooley. And that's our first song, and I hope you're excited about it. One thing I wanted to mention before we do that, if you have a physical disability, um, arthritis, or you don't have a digit or something on your left hand, and for whatever reason you can't use all four fingers, don't worry about it. I mean, you can play the chord buddy like that. I mean, it doesn't matter. You can play it over. You can lay the guitar down and play it like a steel guitar and just mash them. So, you know, ever how you have to do it, do it. Uh, the main reason why I'm showing this way is the chord buddy is used as a bridge to going from using the chord buddy to not using the chord buddy. And so I want to let you get, gain some independence of your fingers. So when you start making your chords for real, uh, you've already got some independence going, some muscle memory happening there, some coordination. All right, we're going to do Tom Dooley right now, and I'm going to start the metronome. It's important that you play with the metronome. That way you learn your timing. You don't speed or rush. We've got it set to 80. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Lay down your head, Tom Dooley. Lay down your head and cry. Lay down your head, Tom Dooley. Poor boy, you're bound to die. Okay? So, I hope you played along with me there. If you didn't, back it up uh, and play it again. And that's just uh, how easy your first song has been. Uh, we will learn some different picking patterns. That's actually called the quarter strum pattern. And that's in your book, and you can follow along with that. So I'm going to speed it up now, just a little bit faster, and we're going to play it now at 95, okay? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Lay down your head, Tom Dooley. Lay down your head and cry. Lay down your head, Tom Very good, very good. By the way, as, as you've noticed, I'm not a singer. <laughs> so uh, don't let that detour you. Uh, ki karaoke's world full of people that's not singers either. So, hey, it's fun. That's why we do it. All right, we're going to go on to now a three-quarter timing song, which is also called a waltz time. Just a minute. Well, all right, that was fun, wasn't it? We're going to go on to song two now. And song two is Oh My Darling Clementine, and it is a three-quarter song. What is three-quarter time? Three-quarter time is more commonly called waltz time. And where the previous song, Tom Dooley, we had four beats per the measure, and three-quarter time, you only have three beats per measure. So it's like one, two, three, one, two, three. Three, one, two, 
three. And typically the one is accented. So if I'm strumming this, I'm going to accent the one. Here we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay? So now I'm going to start the metronome at 80, and I've got it set to three-quarter time. And we're going to do Oh My Darling Clementine. Two, three. One, two, three. One, two. Oh, my darling. Oh, my darling. Oh, my darling Clementine. You are lost and gone forever. I am sorry. Oh my darling, oh my darling, oh my darling Clementine, you are lost and gone forever, I am sorry Clementine. Okay, and that was at 80 beats per minute. Now, we're going to go up to 95 beats per minute. And by the way, back this up as many times as you need to and play with it over and over, okay? So we're, now we're at 95 beats per minute. One, two, three, one, two. Oh, my darling, oh, my darling, oh, my darling Clementine. You are lost and gone forever. I am sorry, Clementine. One more time. Oh, my darling. Oh, my darling, oh, my darling Clementine, you are lost and gone forever. I am sorry, Clementine. That's fun, isn't it? Hey, it's fun for me, and I've been playing guitar for 40 years, and I still love playing the chord, buddy. Well, all right, we're three songs in here, and we're going to introduce the pick strum technique on, on top of Old Smokey. And it is, let me show you what it is first. All the pick strum technique is, is you pick the root note of the chord that you're playing. In this case, it's a G. Pick the sixth string, and then strum the bottom five. Pick, strum, strum, pick, strum, strum. So you're picking a single note, and then you're strumming twice. And that is on a three-quarter time song. If we're doing 4-4, four, four, it would be pick, strum, pick, strum. And we'll go over that in just a minute. So we're going to do it on top of O Smokey. It actually is in the key of G, but it's, its first chord is the chord C. Okay, so be prepared for that. Be ready to... And we haven't played a C yet, so this will be the first time playing the C, and that's why we did it first, so you can start off with it, okay? So be ready to mash down the green tab, which is the C tab, with your middle finger, okay? And you're going to pick the fifth string and strum the bottom four, okay? That's how that works. On the D, you're going to pick the fourth string from the bottom and strum the bottom three. One, two, three. On top of a smoky, all covered with snow, I lost my true lover from courting to slow. Let's do it again. on top of O Smokey, and we were using the pick strum technique. Just to recap that before we stop, go to the next song. You want to pick on a C chord, middle finger, green tab,
pick the fifth string and strum the bottom four. Pick the fifth string, strum the bottom four. That's for the C. For the G, pick the sixth string and strum the bottom five. For the D, pick the fourth string and strum the bottom three. Okay, so that's the pick strum technique. One, two, three, one, two. On top of a snow pea, all covered with snow. Fifteen. All right, we're going to learn what's called the alternating pick strum method. Let me explain what it is. If you remember, we did the pick strum method on the song before, and that's where you pick the root and strum. Okay, we're actually going to do a 4-4 timing song now, which our initial 4-4 four, four timing was 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? The alternating pick strum, you actually pick the root note, and then you're going to pick the fourth string open, which is a D note, but it's the fifth note of the G scale. Some of this stuff, I'm just going to tell you, may be confusing to you right now. Just listen to it, absorb it, it will make sense eventually to you. So I'm going to repeat what I just said. On the alternating pick strum technique, you pick the root, which is a G note for the G chord, and strum. And then you're going to pick the open fourth string, which is a D note. A D note is the fifth note of a G scale. And then you strum. So let me play it. Root. Four string open, root, four string open, six string, four string, pick, strum, pick, strum. So what you're doing there, if a bass guitar was playing with us right now, the bass guitar's job in the band is to play the first and the fifth note of the scale of the chord that you're playing. So the bass guitar would be going, boom, 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 boom. See, that's the root and then the fifth note. So G note, D note, G note, D note. We don't have a bass guitar, so we are our bass guitar. We're playing the bass guitar part in our rhythm. So I'll do it again. As you see, that's a lot more exciting than just the, the pick strum technique, which is root, root, so you're just keeping it all the same. When you go to the alternating pick strum, it adds a little bit more excitement to it because you actually start playing what the bass guitar would play. See? Okay, so during, on the song Johnny Cash's Ring of Fire, we will be using the pick strum, alternating pick strum technique. All right, welcome back to the fourth song. And this is actually, believe it or not, I didn't know that. And uh, that is why I'm telling you and why it's in this book and on the DVD. Ring of Fire by Johnny Cash is actually the most popular country song ever written and recorded. 
Uh, I wouldn't have thought that, but it is. Uh, and as you notice, I got on some specs here, uh, 48 year old eyes here, so uh, I've had to put them on in the, in the break there. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Love is a burning thing, and it makes a fiery ring. Bound. By wild desire, I fell into a ring of fire. I fell into a burning ring of fire. It went down, 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 and the flames went higher, and it burned. What I want to explain now is I want to explain each chord and what notes that you pick and strum for the alternating pick strum technique. So let me show you the G again. You pick the sixth string and strum, then the open fourth string and strum. For the C chord, it's the only one that's a little different. Actually, the C chord uses the root and the third, which the third note in the C scale is E. So uh, the G was the one in the five. That was the alternating bass line. A C on the chord buddy is the one in the three. So you actually pick the fifth string. That's a C note. It's from the bottom four. Then you pick the fourth string, which is an E note, and then strum the bottom three. Now on to the D chord. This goes back to the one five again. You pick the four string open, strum the bottom three. Then you pick the fifth string open, which is an A note, and strum the bottom four. So back to the D, four string open, fifth, fourth, fifth. One, two, three, four. Okay, all right, I'm gonna jump ahead just a second now, and I'll, we haven't seen the E minor yet, but I wanna go ahead and go to it since I'm explaining the alternating pick strum technique. On the E minor, you play it with the index finger, you pick the sixth string, strum the bottom five. Okay, the alternate part of this is you pick the fifth string and strum the bottom four. So I'll play it now in sequence. Six, five. So what you're doing here is you're, when you're picking the open six string, that's an E note, which is the root of E. And then when you're playing the fifth string and mashing the button there, that's a B note, which is the fifth tone, okay? I love the E minor chord. It sounds sounds cool to me. <laughs> okay, so that gets us. That explains the alternating pick strum technique for G, C, D, and E minor. Well, we're on to the next song now. It's actually one of the legendary songs of pop and rock. It's a Beatles tune called "Let It Be." And I'm going to demonstrate this song using two strumming techniques. The first one will be the alternating pick technique, which utilizes the root, strum, and then the fifth of the, of the scale strum. So root, strum, fifth, strum. That's the alternating technique. We actually learned it in the song before. Now, having said that, you don't have to use the alternate, uh, the pick alternating technique, you can use just the pick strum technique. If the, if the alternating strum you don't have down yet, that's the alternating strum. If you don't have it down yet, just do the pick strum technique. Root, root, C. So, you know, if you don't have it down, just use the, the simpler uh, strumming technique. 
Then we're going to go to a more complicated pattern, and that will be the most complicated one that we'll, we'll do on this DVD and in the book, but it's called the pop rhythm. And it's the strumming technique that are, is used on a ton of uh, popular pop music, rock and roll, and even some country these days. Okay, we're going to do uh, Let It Be using the alternating pick strum technique. We always start our metronome. Our metronome is on 125. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me singing words of wisdom. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be, Lord, let it be, singing words of wisdom, let it be. Okay? So that was let it be. One thing we added there, and I didn't say it at the beginning of the song, but we introduce our E minor to the mix of things, and that's our fourth chord. It is the sixth tone in a G scale. And uh, that's why it is the E minor. If you start with G, G, A, B, C, D, and E. See, E is the sixth tone in the key of the scale of G. So uh, we introduced it. So I'm going to play it one more time using this technique, the pick strum technique. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, singing words of wisdom, let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be, Lord, let it be, singing words of wisdom, let it be. Now, if you'll notice, I did something at the end of the song there I haven't done before. I did a run. I went. That is a C to G run. Because we're playing a C chord. And that is in the book. I did that. wanted to show you that because with Chord Buddy, you can do all kinds of runs. You don't just have to strum chords. You can pick songs out using Chord Buddy. And you can play all kinds of runs. You can do what's called hammer-on. Since we're doing an E minor, I'll show you an E minor hammer-on real quick. You actually pick the fifth string and then, and then mash the, the button. See? That's called a hammer-on. The hammer-on... What you're really doing is you're picking a note, then you're hammering on, and you're getting two notes from one pick. That's why it's called a hammer-on. Okay. Now we're going to talk about the pop strum. The pop strum, and I'm just going to play it and, and do it real slow before we do it with the song, and I'll play it over a G chord. You do down, down, up, up, down, up. Down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to back the metronome back up. We're going to get it on about 95. One, two, three, four. You just play along with me. Down, down, up. I warn you, this rhythm here is not the easiest in the world. It will take you a few days or maybe even a week to really get comfortable because what you're doing there in the middle is you're actually skipping uh, a beat. So you're doing down, down, up. What you're playing, you're playing on, on a one, two, three, four measure. You're playing the one, the two, and then you're doing the and of two. Like one and two 
and three and four and. You're doing the one, two, and, and you're skipping the three and playing the and of three, the four, and then the and of four. I, I know, I know, I'm with you. That sounds very confusing. Again, trust me, roll with me here, just do it, and then it will start making sense to you. And then all of a sudden, I, I'll say it with my students, you'll have an aha moment where you go, aha, that's what he's talking about. So, just get the pattern down, get some muscle memory going here. Down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. And now I'll play Let It Be. Let me go back up to 125. And I'll play uh, Let It Be with the pop strum rhythm. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You got it? You got it. When I find myself in times of trouble, Brother Mary comes to me singing words of wisdom. Let it be. Let it be, let it be, let it be, Lord, let it be. Singing words of wisdom, let it be. Again, when I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me. Singing words of wisdom, let it be. Let it be, let it be, let it be, Lord, let it be. Singing words of wisdom, let it be. And that is the pop strum technique. And it is a down, down, up, up, down, up pattern. Okay, we're to the last song of uh, the lesson plan, and that's actually a Van Morrison song who's actually still out playing. I was heard on the radio the other day that I was passing through a town. They said Van Morrison had played in Birmingham, Alabama the night before. I didn't even know he was still out, but he still is. That's good to hear. Uh, but Brown Eyed Girl, one of the most popular pop songs uh, ever written, I guess. And it actually utilizes the pop strum technique that we touched on in Let It Be. And I'm just going to go over it again real quick. It's a down, down, up, up, down, up. Up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. Okay? And it just repeats over and over. So we're going to turn the metronome on, and I'm going to sing through one verse of Our Brown-Eyed Girl. Again, thanks for putting up with my singing. I, I know I'm not a singer, but... Anyway, we'll get by. One, two, three, four. Hey, when did we go? Days when the rains came. Down in a hollow. Playing a new game. Laughing and a running. Hey, hey. Skipping and a jumping. In the misty morning fog. Oh. My heart was bumping in you, my brown-eyed girl. You, my brown-eyed girl. And naturally, the song goes on and does the sha la 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 la. But it's you can uh, get that in the book. And, uh, but that gets you through and just shows you how the pop strum works on Brown Eyed Girl. All right, the next segment, play over this a, a little while, get used to it, go to the book, refer back to it. But what we're going to do next is we're going to start removing the tabs. And I'll talk more of that in just a minute. Well, all right, we are to the most important part of why Chord Buddy came into existence, and that is the removal of the tabs, and you will start playing chords yourself and using Chord Buddy too. So you'll be, the first chord we're going to make is a D chord, and you're going to actually make D yourself, and you're going to use the tabs to play your other chords right now. 
You know, I didn't talk about this earlier, and it's a good time to bring it up, I guess. You know, six out of ten people quit playing the guitar from frustration. They get so frustrated in learning. And I, I've literally, I've been teaching for 30 years, and I've had this idea for 25. I've had hundreds and hundreds of, of kids and adults alike be so excited to learn the guitar and then before two months is up, and that's why we have a two-month course here, they get frustrated. They hit, I call it, the river of frustration, and they drown in it. Because you have to learn three and four chords just to play a song. And, and that's pretty hard to do. I mean, I, I'll, I'll say myself, when you're trying to learn how to strum with your right hand, and you're trying to learn how to make the chords and keep them from buzzing and muting out and all that, it, it can be very frustrating. And that's why Chord Buddy came into existence. But anyway, uh, hopefully with this product, and I know without a doubt that it will get you over the river of frustration. Chord Buddy will be the bridge for that. So anyway, let's remove our first tab, and it is your D tab. So all you're going to do is lay it down flat in your lap, push down with your thumb the E, the C, and the G. So you just push them down and get them out of the way. Lift the D up slightly and pull it out. That's all there is to it. Just literally lift it up a little bit and pull it out. It pulls right out. Set it down. And now I'm going to ask you to refer back to the book and see the way you finger a D chord. And I'm going to make it for you. You see this little tunnel right there? Well, your first finger goes right underneath that little tunnel. And then your middle finger goes on the bottom string, second fret. And then your ring finger goes on your second string, third fret. So let's recap that. Your index finger goes on the th one, two, three, third string, right under the tunnel. The middle finger, or second finger, goes on the second fret, first string, and then your ring finger goes on the third fret, second string. And then you strum the bottom four. And that's a D chord. Okay, so you're going to have to make this a, a few times. Take your fingers off and then put them back on and make it again. Take them off and make it again. Okay, now the first thing I want you to do is I want you to play the D chord four times. One, two, three, four. Then with your pinky, match the G. One, two, three, four. Then make the D chord again. One, two, three, four. With your pinky, come up, match the G. Okay? And that is your first pattern for Tom Dooley. So we're going to go back to the first song we did, and we're going to play Tom Dooley with you making the D chord for yourself. Start off with your G, and I'll start the, we're back on 80 again. I'm doing it slow. Two, three, four. Two, four. Lay down your head, Tom Dooley. Lay down your head. Lay down your head, Tom Dooley. Poor boy, you're bound to die. Keep it going. Lay down your head, Tom Dooley. Lay down your head and cry. Lay down. And you can also do uh, Oh My Darling Clementine with that same, because uh, it's only a two chord song, so you'll start off. Oh my darling, oh my darling, oh my darling Clementine, you are lost and gone forever, I am sorry Clementine. One more time. Pick, strum, strum. We're going to... Do your pitch strum technique on this song. 
All right, and that is the two songs, uh, pick, strum, strum, and just the quarter note pattern, all downstrokes, when you're making the D chord yourself. Well, good, you're back, and I know you've had a little time to work on your D chord, and I hope that's working well for you. I'm sure it is. It just takes a little practice, you know. Uh, the thing with anything, as I mentioned at the beginning of the DVD, whether it's mathematics, spelling, or pool shooting, or, or whatever, it doesn't matter, it's sports, you have to practice, and you need to at least be practicing 30 minutes a day. Okay, if, if you notice here, I've got uh, another tab removed. I have removed the C tab. So that's the second tab that you remove. And the song we'll do there is uh, the first song that used three chords earlier on the DVD and in the book, and that's on top of Old Smokey. Let me explain the C chord, and you can get your book out and you can look at how to make a C chord. Your first finger, your index finger, you come over this little area here on the chord, buddy. You see it's got a little indention, and that's so your finger can come over that. So on the second string, first fret, and then you put your middle finger on the fourth string, second fret, and then your ring finger, and as you'll notice, there's a little room here. We left just enough room to get your finger in right there. And then your ring finger goes on the fifth string, third fret. So let's recap that. Second string, first fret, fourth string, second fret, fifth string, third fret, and then you strum from the fifth string down. Okay, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, let's speed it up now. Let's stop this. We're on 95. Let's go up to 115. And let's start it again. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. On top of smoky, all covered with snow. Good, very good. Okay, now take a little time and learn to make the C chord. Get very good at make going from C to D and G, still using the tab for your G. And when we come back, we're going to remove the G tab. All right, we're to removing another tab now. So I know some time has passed. You've had a few days to work on your D, and you've had some more time to work on your C, so you've gotten it down. Now it's time to play the G chord. All right, so all you do to remove the G, and this is about as simple as it can get, is you pull it out. <laughs> That's it, okay? So pull the G out, lay it to the side, let me explain how to make a G chord. 
you will start from the top string and go down. Your ring finger goes on the third fret top string. Your middle finger goes on the fifth string second fret. And your pinky goes on the bottom string, the smallest string in the third fret. And you strum all six. That is a G. Now let me do that one more time. Your ring finger goes on the third fret, sixth string. Your middle finger or second finger goes on the fifth string, second fret. And your pinky goes on the third fret, bottom string. And I may have said second fret right there if I, I meant third fret. So third fret, top string, second fret, fifth string, little string or first string in the third fret. And you strum all six. So what we're going to do for this song, we're going to do the Beatles song, Let It Be Again. One, two, one, two. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, singing words of wisdom, let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be, Lord, let it be, singing words of wisdom, let it be. All right, so that's let it be, and now you're making the G, the C, and the D yourself. So spend some time with, with that song. Hey, the, your songbook that comes with Chord Buddy has a hundred songs in it. Every song works with Chord Buddy. So if you're tired of playing these songs, and you may be by now, if you hadn't jumped ahead of me, go ahead and get the songbook out, look through them, find some of your favorite songs, and start playing those. You don't have to just play the songs that we've already played over and over. So go ahead and experiment and, and uh, widen your horizon, your musical horizon there, and open the book and get into that. When we come back, we're going to remove the E minor, and then we'll talk about life without the chord buddy. Well, all right, I hope and trust that the G chord went well for you. That's a fun chord to play. All right, we are to the last tab removal, and that is the lonely E minor. Doesn't he look lonely sitting up there all by himself? <laughs> oh, but you fixing to go away too, boy. All right, all you do for the E minor to remove it, and you know that already, is just pull it out, and it comes straight out. And we're going to do the Van Morrison song as soon as I show you how to play an E minor. Uh, and you, and you, now you're making all four chords yourself. Uh, the E minor chord, your middle finger plays the fifth string on the second fret. And you're going to then put your ring finger or the third finger right beneath it, but just a little forward. Because it's kind of hard to stack them up evenly. So just right down beside it, just sort of pull it right down beside it on the fourth string second fret. So both strings, the fifth and fourth string, are mashed down in the second fret. And that's your E minor. Okay? So now we're going to do Brown Eyed Girl. And we'll use our pop rhythm for this. And remember that was down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down. Let me start the metronome. Up. Hey, where did we go? Days when the rains came down in a hollow, way in a new day, laughing and a running, hey, hey, skipping. Congratulations. 
you have gone in a basically a two month time frame from using the cord buddy entirely to saying bye bye to it. And I'm proud of you. Uh, it's going to take some work. Your work's not over with yet. So practice these songs. Go in the book and uh, pick out your favorite songs and start playing those. And um, you can also, if you want to, to go to some other keys, uh, Chord Buddy has the key of C, the key of D, the key of A, and the key of E. So you can buy those keys and you can start the whole process over again. Some of the chords you you will already know. For instance, in the key of D, it all it uses the D chord and the G chord. So you only have to learn two new chords for the key of D. So anyway, have some fun with it, y'all. It's all about fun. Please practice about 30 minutes a day minimum. And I'm going to come back in just a minute. We'll talk a little bit about music theory. All right, I want to explain a little bit about basic music theory to you. But before I get into that, I want to talk to you about making your chords. I'm sure you've had roughly a month now of making the D, then the C, the G, and E minor. And I know you had what I call some clunkers or some thudders, where instead of it sounding clear, it sounded maybe like that. Uh, please, please do not let that discourage you. Uh, I know with the chord buddy, they all sounded clean and clear, and then when you started making them yourself, maybe it was up, maybe a little thuddy like that. That happens to everybody. Don't worry about it. The prime thing to remember and main thing is where your fingers go. The clarity will come. I promise you it will. As your fingers get more strength in them, and as you gain confidence in knowing where to go, your chords will become just as clear as that. So please don't let that frustrate you. Okay, a little bit about basic music chord theory. A chord is made up of at least three notes, and that's called a triad. A triad. Tri meaning three, and I, I made this up myself, but it works, and I can remember it. Tri means three. Triad. Ad means put them together playing three notes at one time makes a chord. That helped me remember it. A chord is made up of three notes. That is called a triad. Tri means three. Add means add them together. That makes a chord. What makes a major chord, if we're talking about a G chord, it is the first note of a G scale, the third note of a G scale, and the fifth note of a G scale. If you know anything about a piano or can go to one, that's easy to see because you skip a white note. You'll play the, a G, and you'll skip the A, B, C, and D, and you, you'll skip those. So a G chord has got three notes in it. It has a G, it has a B, it has a D, it has another G, it has another B, that's the second string open, and then it has another G which is a top string. So if you notice, some of those notes repeat itself. In fact, you have three Gs in, in a G chord. You have the, ba the sixth note, the third note open, third string open, and the bottom string. So that is what makes a chord, and that doesn't change if you're talking about a C chord. A C has three notes in it. It is the, the C, the E, and the G. So you got C, D, E, F, G. C, D, E, the third, F, and G. So that is the one, the three, and the five of a C scale. C, D, E, skip F, and then G. And let's prove that. We have C, fifth string. E is the fourth string, second fret. Open, third string, which is a G. And then index finger is on the C note, first fret, which is the second string, first fret, and then an open E again. That makes a C. That's really all I want to cover in uh, this DVD and is, in book is about basic chord theory. What makes a chord? There's all kinds. Well, all right, in closing, I tell you, I'm so excited 
that we have gone from using the chord buddy to not using it, and you are on your way to a lot of fun with music. And that's what I wanted to say. Just in closing, I wish one thing for you, and that is that you will experience the joy, the fun, and excitement that I have in over 40 years of playing the guitar. I wish the same for you. Practice hard and just enjoy yourself and have a ball. One day you'll be picking along just like I am. Mm -hmm.